you those books you've read what do you th- what would like what are the top three four five books that have really impacted you growing up you know that's such an easy no interesting questions no one's ever asked me that okay there's a book by kierkegaard it's called the present age it's absolutely brilliant okay. um i read it in college it's, it's a book most people haven't heard of but somehow a professor assigned it to me and i read it and it's about the contemporary and it's what's amazing is it was about kierkegaard's age but it's actually really current and it's about the what he saw as the contemporary ish, impulse to destroy everything with sort of it was an intellectual impulse to reduce everything to its constituent parts and so that no no human achievement no matter how remarkable um looked remarkable anymore it was an idea of that we that the that the sort of intellectual class was doing this they were reducing all wonderful things that hu- humans were capable of and humans were do- human beings had done to you know they had sort of taken all the parts together let laid them out and shown that they were actually weren't remarkable at all and kierkegaard saw this as a huge problem in a, in a very sad um um, part of his age. And I think it's an incredibly current book. I don't know. I, it's been a while since I've read it, but that that's one that leaps to mind. That's really interesting because you can say, I don't know when that was written. It sounds like a while ago, but you can see this, the similarities and how relevant that is today. Did that inform you think you're writing for this book today, even subconsciously? You know, everything I've, you know, I, I think that everything I read is in the back of my mind, you know, yeah. you know, there are fic- there are authors of fiction who, who just write so beautifully, even though I write nonfiction that absolutely inform, you know, how I think about things. Um, but I think that had a big impact. I studied philosophy as an undergrad and I did some graduate work in philosophy and I studied uh, what they called in Oxford logic and language. So that was philosophical logic and philosophy of language. And I think that that's always in the back of my mind, especially with these trans activists who insist that they're they're they're, they're going to change all of our language and give it new meaning. Um, Wittgenstein talks about whether you can have private language, um, and 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 he he really you know argues against the possibility of private language. You know, one individual or a tiny group can't just decide that words mean something different from how a community of users has used that language because um, it's through use that we give words meaning. So, you know, there a lot of these things are sort of in the back of the, my mind, um, but but as, as I'm sure it's true for everyone. For sure. Like, I want to go in that direction, but I also want to, like, touch on what is some... Is there a, another book that you that has been particularly resourceful philosophically for you over the years that you come back to, maybe one that you gift the most to people? Um... I read a lot of fiction. Let me think. I, I think that um, Caitlin Flanagan's Girl Land had a big impact on me when I read it. It was about, she really nails what it's like. It wasn't that long ago that she wrote it, but the experience, the interiority of the experience of being an adolescent girl, I think she just absolutely nails it. And the importance for young girls of a diary and a space that's just for them uh, while they're going through a really confusing time um, I think she describes it really beautifully, and it's it's a it's certainly a book that I've read a few times. Actually, here's one: you could gift a book, re- mandatory reading to every young girl in America, high school. Which book are you giving them? And maybe it's your own, <laughs> or maybe besides your own. What book would you gift them to guide them through that process? It's so funny. You know, I'm going to give you a funny answer, but it's just a book I love. There's a book called The Idiot by Alif Bataman. It's a work of fiction that came out in the last few years. And it it just describes her experience being a freshman at Harvard. And I just love it. It's beautifully written. And it, it really reminds me of, of all, all the confusion. And I, I think she just absolutely describes all the confusion of that, that, that sort of cusp of womanhood. Um, period of our lives really really beautifully so and that's like that, ch- that's one book children it's, it's like very friendly for children like it's it's an easier read oh i i probably wouldn't give it to young children maybe okay. maybe young teens um for for younger children um gosh that's a good question uh what do i like for that my kids and i ever there's so many things i mean we like harry potter obviously um the kids have all read it we like a lot of roll doll i think I think that um, 
one of the I read a lot of Roald Dahl with the kids, um, in part because you know Roald Dahl really gets inside kids' heads and all the things that frighten children, and he describes them. He doesn't pander ever mm. to his audience. He really, it's very different from today's, you know, it's a, it's sort of a good antidote to today's insistence on, on hiding all the, you know, scary things in life from our children. He doesn't pander at all. And he lays bare sort of children's deepest fears. And somehow once you've gotten through reading them, those aren't, they aren't so scary anymore. 